Hello. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. I am incredibly pleased to be here today and very grateful for the opportunity to be able to speak to so many people about what it is like to have lymphedema from a patient's perspective. My diagnosis for breast cancer arrived unexpectedly in 2016 and I had a full bilateral mastectomy as well as an axillary dissection. What that means is that they took about 13 out of the somewhat 40 lymph nodes out from under my left armpit and I was left with a great big huge gaping hole. And uh, you know, I then went and did chemotherapy and was due to start radiation when it was Easter, Friday, um, it was actually Good Friday Eve, and I complained to my beloved who was a GP about the fact that my thumb had been stung by an insect because it was hot and red and swollen. And as he looked at my thumb, he said, my darling, that is not an insect bite. I'm so sorry. I think you might have lymphedema. So it was fairly traumatizing because I then had four days of a public weekend. It's the most public holidays that we have in a row. And I had no access to any compression garments. And the discomfort and the pain was fairly significant. And I just took some normal crepe bandaging and used that as an opportunity to wrap my arm. But you know, the, the, it just did not give me any significant amount of um, relief. And so by the time I went back to the hospital, it was Tuesday morning and I was due to see my oncologist. So I was very lucky because I saw the physiotherapist beforehand the one that had gone through all the, you know, the signs to look out for lymphedema. And uh, she actually diagnosed me with lymphedema then and gave me a sleeve, but it wasn't a custom fit. It was in fact, just one off the shelf. And, you know, it was fairly devastating in that moment because I, you know, suddenly realized that I had now got something that I had hoped never, ever, ever to get. And I then became the one in five women who develop lymphedema after having lymph nodes out. So if one diagnosis isn't bad enough, it was now a double whammy. So that started my journey, Easter of 2017. Uh, so here we are three and a half years later. And I still haven't really reached a state where my lymphedema is really what I consider, you know, stable. I have moved rapidly from, you know, stage one, stage two into stage three lymphedema. And what that really means is that the arm has become fairly fibrotic. So what I wanted to really tell people about and to share with everyone is the many things that I have chased in an attempt to find some relief in lymphedema world. Now, as you can imagine, you know, people who study lymphedema generally don't have lymphedema. In fact, after having my diagnosis, I then wanted to go and get my training in lymphedema and I got knocked back because I've done a business degree and I haven't done a science degree with anatomy, I am not able to do that qualification. However, what they require from you as the patient every day is to manage your own lymphedema. And I am definitely an information junkie and I enjoy having as much information under my belt as possible so that I can have the best way to understand exactly what's going on so that I can then look after myself without worrying if I'm doing it right or wrong. So, you know, when I understood then that I couldn't actually go and do some of the qualifications, uh, I then decided that I was going to go on a, an epic journey where I was going to then look out for numerous different ways where I can improve my quality of life. What I did know for sure was that with lymphedema, I was told that it was lifelong and that there was no cure, and I would need to wear compression bandaging for the rest of my life. And, you know, I have gone from wearing a bandage that comes out of a box 
to nowadays getting one custom fitted. Now custom fitted, what that means is that, you know, you go along to the clinic and generally I will do bandaging. And with the bandaging, the idea behind the bandaging is to break down any of the fibrotic or the fibrosis inside the arm. Fibrosis is caused by the leaking of the lymphatic fluid into the interstitial tissue. And as you can imagine, the body is programmed uh, to convert, those skin cells are, are programmed to convert any lymphatic um, liquid that is staying there for too long into lymphatic fat cells. Now, lymphatic fat cells do not behave like normal fat cells. It's not like we can just go and do a diet and from the diet, we can then um, shrink those fat cells. Unfortunately, lymphatic fat does not respond like other fat cells. So once you have these fatty deposits in your arm, it becomes extremely difficult to move fluid out of your limb. So uh, I do use um, custom made sleeves and that means going in and we do bandaging. And for people who don't really know much about lymphedema, there's two types of bandaging. You get the traditional uh, short wrap bandaging and these are reusable bandages, which you get given and you take them home and you need to wash overnight and dry them flat overnight so that they can get their uh, stretch back. And then you go back into the clinic and uh, get wrapped again. And it kind of mummifies the arm and puts the arm under a certain amount of pressure to squeeze as much fluid out of the arm and into the system. Another form of bandaging that they use, which is not as successful on fibrotic tissue is Coban. And this is not a reusable bandage, but having had both done, I love Coban. It's really comfortable. And in fact, it maintains its stretch for about three days, which means that the owners to uh, go up to the hospital each and every day for treatment is no longer there. You can go um, up to three days with the same bandaging on your arm and keeping it at that pressure. It's far lighter and uh, certainly is a far more pleasant experience. However, what we've discovered is that um, traditional bandaging does work better for fibrotic arms like mine. So that's the two types of bandaging. If you weren't aware that you sometimes could have a choice or you could ask for something different, then uh, if you're a lymphedema patient, awareness is key. And it's wonderful when we have a, a deeper understanding of you know, managing our own self better. So when we, I first was diagnosed with lymphedema, I raced through and started gathering all sorts of information. So I have used plenty of different creams on my arm. I researched which type of oils work best. And uh, I tended to, uh, I went to an aromatherapist and uh, a clinical aromatherapist and got her advice on which oils to use. And she made me up a custom uh, blend so that I could use it to you know, uh, reduce inflammation in the area. I've also tried colonics because our lymphatic system is like our sewerage system. And if you imagine the downpipe being blocked, uh, then we've got backup. And so I have done colonics. And for those of you who are a little bit squeamish, um, it was my first time trying colonics. I was that desperate that I was willing to give it a red hot go. And uh, while nothing is going to cure you of lymphedema, it certainly does give you the opportunity for improving what you're experiencing. And, uh, you know, reducing the load on the body is ultimately key. When I've been going through my bandaging, what I've discovered as well is that when you're doing bandaging, and often it's for three, for a week, you know, for two weeks, but going up there every day, um, you know, they take the bandage off, you then what get to finally scratch your arm and wash your arm and uh, put some more, um, you know, cream on it. And uh, when I started squeezing the arm, I would find that by the time I left the room and the bandaging would take maybe, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes. By the time I got to the car, I was feeling particularly unwell. 
and you know, I started wondering whether it was really a good idea that I was driving myself to the bandaging sessions. So after talking to Chelsea Jean, and you will hear from her later on, I have discovered that, you know, it might be a great idea, not might be, definitely is a great idea, to in fact uh, lighten your load in terms of what you're putting into your body when you're doing bandaging in particular. So when we're eating food, our body is concentrating on digesting. And, you know, when you're doing bandaging, you are squeezing all the toxins that are sitting on the shelf inside your arm. You, you sort of push them off the shelf and you're then squeezing them up your arm. So I ended up having like a, a fairly overloaded body. And so, you know, that feeling when your body is so overloaded with toxins and you're not clearing it, it will stay around for a lot longer if your body is focusing on digestion. So what I do now with the bandaging is I tend to keep my meals incredibly light. I stick to beautiful broths and soups so that uh, my body is really constant, has the ability to really focus on, you know, working with the lymphatic system as opposed to being distracted with digestion. So that might be a useful tip that you might want to, to try as well. So I've tried oils and I have tried colonics. Another thing that I've tried that has been incredibly useful is a negative pressure device. Now, when I first used this device, I actually had a little bit of reticence around the practitioners who have been formally trained in level one and two training down at Macquarie University. Um, partly because, you know, it's not considered um, the, the right way forward. You know, there's a lot of unknowns. But my personal experience with this, and I do have, you know, later stage lymphedema, is that uh, the relief in terms of pain relief was significant. But, you know, I would arrive there and certainly take off maybe half a centimetre off my arm. So we'd do pre and post measures on my, my arm. And I would always be very happy when those numbers went down. But the main thing was that with reduced pain, I had a greater capacity for emotional coping. And while, you know, that reduction is not permanent, certainly when you reduce that much fluid inside an arm, you, you, you feel so much better. Your arm improves, you know, in function um, and also certainly in, in form. And, uh, you know, emotionally, I was in a much better headspace. So my negative pressure device is actually called uh, LPG. It's a home LPG device. And what it does is um, it actually has a roller. And I might just get it for you so that you can see what it looks like and um, see how it works. So this is um, my LPG. So if you can see it from the side, and what you can see is there's two rollers here, and this creates a suction. So it sucks the skin up while it's you're rolling it, you're rolling it over. Um, I attribute uh, this to um, you know keeping some of the um, when you have a look at the lymphatic vessels and how things work, it's kind of stretching everything inside and making everything exercise, particularly in these areas where we are unable to exercise it um, ourselves. Certainly when I do any formal exercise and I overheat, my arm swells up and I find that really distressing. Um, it's distressing to see your hard work in reducing the limb size go in the opposite direction, but it's certainly distressing on every level when um, the pain increases. So you can imagine if you've rolled your ankle and you've got fluid inside those joints, what it feels like. Well, it's very similar to a lymphedema patient when they have excess fluid in their joints. It's, um, it's fairly uncomfortable. 
and uh, you know this is my very first time I've actually speaking about my lymphedema story. I tend to talk about my breast cancer story. I can talk about my breast cancer story without crying, in fact, with a lot of humor and a lot of insight. But when I've spoken about lymphedema, I've just found that I've got no resilience and I end up crying. And, you know, until we can speak about our, or tell our story without crying, that is a, an indication now that I'm healed. Um, and I would say healed emotionally. It's taken me the longest time and I am totally and utterly shocked with how long it has taken. When I was first diagnosed with breast cancer, I felt like I rapidly moved through, you know, the, the upsetting stage of it and could rapidly progress onto the bit where I started working with people, helping them understand it and support it. And I used it as a, a great tool for, for learning about myself. And sometimes I wonder if I, I sailed through that too easily. And that's why I got gifted uh, the second opportunity to do a little bit more self-discovery. And I am really shocked at how long it's taken for me to bounce back. Um, I am, you know, considered as you know, in the Winnie the Pooh story, I would call myself a tigger. I do bounce around. I do see the bright side of life. And my glasses, certainly, I always see it as half full. So the lymphedema story and certainly my journey into it has been incredibly challenging. And um, I would prefer for people not to ask about it because I never quite nailed what I was going to say or how I was going to say it without crying. So going through uh, other things that I have found incredibly useful, what I'm sitting on right now, you can see I'm bouncing, <laughs> that is my lymphasizer. Now, um, my Zen pod, I found out about this through some Facebook groups and I thought, oh my goodness, isn't it just a $20 rebounding trampoline from Big W? And it's not. Um, there has been some research, in fact, by the Auckland University into why is it if rebounders are so incredibly important in the work they do and they're so effective, why aren't people using them more? And what they did when they started uh, doing the research on it is that people bouncing on the, those trampolines, those mini ones, uh, it was creating a field around the person and it, in essence it was crashing someone's biomagnetic field. So Auckland University actually had a metallurgist which is someone who studies metals uh, looking into uh, the type of alloy or metal that springs are made of, of and looking at how the nucleus inside the metal reacts and responds. So they've come up and understood that you know it's really important how the coils are the springs in the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere they're actually coiled in different ways the way in which the trampoline mat is attached to the outside metal circle makes a difference as well as when you've done that which direction you face so when i bought mine it actually arrived with a compass and so i face mine you've got a little tag and you face yours north and you do your your uh, exercise facing north. So my, my home does look really bizarre. It looks like my lounge room is filled with all my bits and pieces and equipment to keep me healthy, whole and safe. And uh, with that came instructions which opened my eyes and awareness to the magic of breath. Now, when you're standing on this little trampoline or sitting on it, what you're doing with that, that small amount of movement is that you're actually really bouncing down. When you think about the lungs, the top part of your lungs are really narrow. The bottom part is really wide. So the top part of your lungs are also hit, uh, kept within a cage. The clavicles, the rib cage at the front, the rib cage at the back. So when we're taking that breath, we're just um, taking the top breath. There's nowhere for the lungs to expand into. If we're taking a belly breath, which is something which alkalizes the body and alkalines it, as opposed to the top breath that we make our body more acidic. 
when we take a big fat deli belly breath, our diaphragm, which is, you imagine like a little triangle, actually flattens down as the belly goes out and expands. So allowing more breath and a better quality breath to come into our bodies. So in essence, you know, uh, learning more about how to use breath was an amazing tool to move forward. And certainly uh, the, the trampoline or my lymphocyzer helps with that, just sort of doing the exercises on it, certainly drops that diaphragm down and helps with also uh, opening and closing those lymph, the valves inside the lymphatic vessels, which is really, really important. You know, lymphedema is something which you have to work at all the time. So I'm just going to have a check on the time. It's 2.21, so I'm not sure how many minutes I've been going for. So, uh, lymphat so lymphocyzer, zen pod, um, negative pressure, uh, oils. Uh, another thing that I have been using, and you'll hear about it at length by Chelsea later on, is Chelsea's amazing, I call them her magic mitts and her cream. And the cream is being developed to support the lymphatic system. So, you know, it's, it's adding all these tools into the toolbox to fully support the body, whether I am at home or whether I've traveled away. You know, some of my tools, my toolbox travel really easily with me and others don't. Another tool in my toolbox is my um my Swedish healing mat so Swedish healing mat. and uh, so what I love about that is it's another way of getting energy flowing with inside the body um, lying on that for some people it's too much hard work to be able to lie on the ground which is hard so if you're starting out I would highly recommend maybe you start out on your bed where it will be a much softer experience for you I find now that um, I'm a little bit more hardcore into it, I like to activate those meridian lines, which um, then affects my lymphatic system. And I do it on a hard floor with my legs up the wall and uh, increase that. And that's really powerful in um, helping. Uh, some teas, uh, teas that support uh, your, you know, if you're sipping on warm fluid throughout the day, that's going to be great, you know, your lymph to flush out your lymphatic system. And so you need so much water. Um, people think, well, I'm holding water, but um, you're actually needing heaps of water. And they've found that warm fluid helps you, you flush your lymphatic system better. So there are different herbal teas in which you can drink as well. So um, going through and um, I'm going to press pause.